Welcome to Electron Online. Now in this example you can see why this method on the left side is so much easier than the method on the right side. In this case we have three different masses, one on top of the table and one hanging from each side of the table via a pulley and two strings. Notice because of that we have two different tensions, the tension in string one and the tension in string two and they are not necessarily the same, most likely not the same. But if we use the method where we consider the entire system and all of the forces acting on the system, we recognize only four forces, M1G, M2G, M3G, and the normal force pushing back. In this case, we're assuming that there's no friction between the block on the table and the surface of the table. So we can say that the net force equals the total mass times the acceleration, or the acceleration equals the net force divided by the total mass. We're assuming that the acceleration will be like this because this is the biggest block. We're assuming it's going to pull all the other blocks in that direction. So we can say that this is the force aiding the acceleration and this is the force opposing the acceleration and those two forces cancel each other out. So we have M3G minus M1G for the net force divided by the total mass of some of the three masses. When we factor out a G, we have an expression for the acceleration of the system. Pretty easy that way. But now let's use free body diagrams. When we do that, we recognize that for the first mass, the acceleration is upward. For the second mass, the acceleration is to the right. For the third mass, the acceleration is downward. So for each block, for each free body diagram, we set up an equation F equals MA. For the first block, it's the tension pulling up minus the weight pulling down equals the mass times acceleration. For the second block is the tension to the right minus the tension to the left equals MA. And for the third block is the weight of the third block minus the tension pulling up equals MA, M3A in that case. So now we have three equations and three unknowns, T1, T2, and A. So we have to get rid of both T1 and T2. So what we're going to do first is solve this equation for T2 and plug it into this equation right here, which means that T2 is equal to T1 plus M2A, and that is now going to be substituted into the equation over here. So that equation becomes M3G minus, so since it's minus T2, it'll be minus these two quantities right here. So minus T1 minus M2A, so this is replacing T2, and that will now be equal to M3 times A. So now we have two equations. So this equation now is gone. Now we have this equation right here, this equation right here, and those two equations now only have two unknowns, T1 and A. So now we're going to solve each of those two equations simply for T1 and then set those equal to each other like we did before. So our first equation becomes the following. T1 is equal to M1A plus M1G. So let's box this one, that's our first equation. The second equation, we're going to move this to the other side and this in here. So we have T1 is equal to, on the left side, we have M3G. Over here we have minus M2A. And over here we'll have minus M3A. And that will equal, oh, no, I already did that. That will equal T1. So we have T1 is equal to M3G minus M2A and when we move that to the other side, minus M3A, so we'll box this equation as well. So now we have those two equations, both of them solve for T1, now we can set those equal to each other. Let's see if I have enough room here. I think we have enough room right here, so let me border this off here, so we'll put it right here. So on the left side we have M1A plus M1G equals, on the right side we have M3G we have minus M2A, and we have minus M3A. Okay, let's go ahead and move all the terms that have an A in it to one side, everything else to the other side. So on the left side, we end up with M1A plus M2A plus M3A. And on the right side, we end up with M3G minus M1G. And on the left side, we can factor out an A. On the right side, we can factor out a G. So and finally, we divide everything by the total mass. We get A is equal to plus M3. And again, notice we end up with the exact same equation that we have over here. It just took a little bit more work. 
but it does work indeed if you have to use that technique. If we now want to plug in all the known, all the known quantities, so this becomes equal to m3 minus m1, m3 is 15 minus 5, so we have 15 minus 5 times g divided by the sum of all three masses, which is 5 plus 10 plus 15, and so we have a is equal to 3.27 meters per second squared for the acceleration in this particular case. Again, notice the two methods side by side, it does work, and that's how it's done.